All right, next up, as you can probably see behind me, email automation for e-commerce with Wendy Pierre. Wendy is a studious and dedicated e-commerce and digital marketing professional that develops and implements digital marketing strategies for organizations, ensuring their messages, products, and services reach all the right targets. Well, let's give it up for Wendy. Thank you. All right. I receive about 10 to 12 emails a day uh, from different brands um, like Michael Core, Pandora, um, Darkers, um, Tiffany and Co. And I and I like receiving these emails because it gives me the opportunity to spy um, my competitors because I work for a luxury jewelry brand, so I always want to know what other people are doing. And some of my favorite emails I get from these companies or the ones that are really personalized, and it seems like somebody took their time to write the email, but they really didn't, because I already know what's going on behind closed doors, right? So uh, one of the favorite ones I get all the time is the birthday emails. I always like to see how creative they are, the subject lines, the design, right? And these people know a lot about me because I'm just giving them information all the time because I want to know how creative they can be. So the thing about email automation is collecting a lot of data, right? And I'll go over that, um, all these things today, and so you guys have a better idea what it is, right? So email, let's start with email. Email creates, uh, you could say promotions, it builds brand loyalty, it creates brand awareness, right? Which every brand needs, right? So let me tell you guys what email automation is. Okay, email automation is the best way for you guys, the brands, to engage email messages you know, with their customers at the right time with the right action, right? So, so we wanna know when the right time to send the email and we wanna know what action the customer has taken on our website or with the brand so we can know when to hit them. For example, when I receive birthday emails, these brands know it's my birthday already. Maybe I've told it to them through a product I selected, a form that I filled out, a pop-up I filled out, right? So they already know this stuff, so they want to come back and retarget my inbox so I could buy more, okay? So what email automation is not. Email automation is not a replacement of your current email marketing strategy or system, right? So you, when, it's not looking to replace what you're doing, it's just looking to add value to it, okay? So let's talk about what actions are. Some people call them actions, triggers. So if, for example, a trigger, I gave you an example, birthday is a trigger. So if it's your birthday, we know this information, the brand knows it, they're gonna prepare a really custom or personalized email such as, it'll say, happy birthday, Wendy. We notice you've been a loyal customer for past, you know, this amount of years, and here's maybe a 25% uh, coupon, and here's, in the past, you've bought this stuff, right? I, it, we could show what I've bought before, depending on what kind of business it is, or products that are very similar to what I've purchased before. So it's a very personalized, it's for this person, right? So that's very different from an email campaign that could be very generic, right? And it, people love personalization. People get excited when they receive something that was made specially for them, right? Even if it was made by a computer, right? So we're gonna talk about some of what I call email series that uh, we can automate and personalize. Okay? One is um, card abandonment, right? Which is very important. I go on the website, I browse and I look, I put it in my cart, but somebody calls me on the phone and I completely forget about my order, right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take that data, because by the time, hopefully we already have the email, we know what the product is, and they have a really high commitment intent to buy, right? So we're gonna hit them with a couple of 
emails. So we may send one within two hours of them putting the product in the cart, right? And it'll just say, hey, you forgot your product, complete your purchase, right? And then we may hit them in the next six to nine hours saying, oh, we know you're busy, but don't forget to buy this, right? <laughs> Right? And then, if we want to really get a little bit more aggressive, we might go um, 12, 24, some people go a little bit further than that. But the further you go, the less likely they'll convert. So if you go to the 12 and the 24 hours, what you can do is hit them with a, a coupon and say, hey, we know you really wanted to buy this because you put it in your cart. Here's the 25% coupon, complete your purchase, right? Browse abandonment, very same thing. Um, someone's browsing to the website, meaning you already have the email, so you're tracking every page, every product they see, and if whichever product they stay on the longest, we'll send them an email after like 12 hours and say, hey, you're looking at this, you wanna buy it, right? Here, here's a coupon maybe to finish it. So there's the customer went back. Um, so it's a customer that may have had a bad experience with the brand or just, uh, bought a long time ago, we want to bring them back and say, hey, don't forget about us. We missed you. Come back and, and buy something, you know? Um, so new customer, thank you. So we want to also thank the customers for, for joining the brand because winning customers, it's a lot of work, right? So we want to make them feel special and so they can know that we're there for them, all right? So product reviews and cross sell. So if the customer buys this product, obviously they wanted to buy it. We want to know their experience, not, not only for us, so we can market to them, so the rest of the world can know how awesome your brand and product is, right? So keep that in mind, we also want to do that. Um, so, okay, so just customers that always come back, right? So sometimes brands forget about the customers that are loyal to them that constantly, constantly buy from them. We need to make those customers also feel special, right? And welcome series. We want to tell customer, hey, welcome to the brand. We're here to help you. We're awesome, and we want you to have an awesome experience, right? So those are some of the actions or triggers that we want to set up for our customers, right? So on, a, on an average, email automation can generate about 70% of the revenues that have just been sitting from customers who want to purchase, but hasn't, okay? Let's talk about, let's talk about how to maximize. I don't can you guys see everything? It's big, right? Okay, we'll work with it, okay. All right, we'll start here. Okay, let's go down. Okay, how to maximize uh, email automation. Collect everything. Collect as much data about your customers as you possibly can. A brand that I follow that I think does a really good job with this is Pandora, right? They want to know your name, your birthday, when you got married, special day, the first day you went on your first date, your mother's birthday, your sister's birthday, as much information, right, you can. Do you prefer gold or silver? White gold or yellow gold, right? So <laughs> they want to know everything. So do the same thing. Collect as much data as the customers will allow you uh, to take, right? With that, you could create different groups, right? Seg segmentation, so different groups. So if you are a company that does T-shirts and you have one customer that only buys white T-shirts, so you put them in the white T-shirt category, you won't target them for black, brown, or red t-shirts because they don't buy that, right? So segmentation is very important. Like if you sell, for example, um, I used to work for a company that sell tires, right? What we did was we segmented people that drive certain cars, right? So we know this person drives a Honda Civic, right? Because they go on our website, they select tires for Honda Civic. So we track them um, with their email and we only send them information about cool Honda Civic that would fit on the Honda Civic, right? And we have the year of the car, right? So it's very important. The next thing, which is very important, is A-B testing. We want to know, A-B testing is just an experiment with your emails. You create a campaign or a email uh, flow, and you have the same type of email, you make some changes with two different variables. And we want to test all the time to see which one converts 
better, right? Because not everybody likes the same message, subject line, images, content. It might be the font. So we really want to get as much data as possible, OK? Here are some tools that you guys can use um, just to get a better idea. So the pop-ups will allow you to do different things. So if someone's exiting your website or someone um, just came on there for the first time, you can set up these pop-ups just to collect data, right? So emails, birthdays, zip codes, anything you want to collect, collect. But don't make a long form for the first time, right? So, because that could create fatigue, and they're like, no, I'm not filling this out, right? So, what you should do is collect email and stages. So, first time they come, just get a name and email, right? So, that way you already have a point of contact, and what you can do is start sending promotional emails to them, and once, whenever they buy something, you already have an email now, you have an address, Right? Um, you have credit card, and you have so on and so forth. Right? So um, the second one is just email service providers that uh, focus on e-commerce and email automation. Right? I don't have a preference. Whatever works with what you're trying to do will work. Right? So, and that says, any questions? question in the back huh oh autoresponders which one I use well um, for work I use a company called blue core it's an enterprise level uh, autoresponder so um, any of those I put up will work for you um, if you're doing e-commerce Ooh. Well, you can put it in any uh, of those email uh, providers that I put up. It depends because a lot of the email service providers will charge you sometime based on the size of your email list. So the larger your email list is, the more it's going to cost you. Right, but if you already have information to segment, you can, yeah. You can upload it and you can start segmenting. Yeah. Any other questions? You mentioned the A-B testing. Have you seen there's any specific uh, element in an email that always, there's a lot of like, wide variation of what you The headline that's most important is the photograph that you've seen that makes it to the uh, So, OK, can you repeat the question again? Sure. Uh, with the terms of A-B testing, uh -huh. Okay, and A-B testing, what makes, really makes a difference? Well, yeah, in my experience, offers make a really big difference because they'll open the email, they may not click, right? So your open rates may be really up, but your conversion rates may be down. So offer is very important. Image, subject line is another one from my experience I see, which is important. It has to be really catchy so they could want to open the email. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, okay, so your question is what other forms of messaging yeah. is starting to be really popular? Um, we're testing um, uh, Messenger, Facebook Messenger. It seems to have a very high open rate, but again, people have to opt in. Once they opt in, most people open that. Yeah. Any of the companies I've seen, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I haven't seen it. We use a, a for me, we use a third party company to do that. Yeah. How do you organize or make decisions about how complicated you want your segmentation to be? 
how complicated I would want my segmentations to be. Yeah, you can. Um, sometimes a customer may be in different or the, uh, multiple groups or segments, right? So it's up to you and what you're trying to accomplish, really. So if you don't want it to be too crazy, keep it, keep it small. But if you want to get really down to the data, you could expand as large as you want, right? Or as, long, as large as your provider have the ability to do it. Well, our, our emails, are you trying to say, our emails starting to get better with more personalized, yeah, like nice design? Yeah, the ones okay. that are simpler are, like, tend to convert more than the ones that are, like, really flashy and fancy. It really depends on your audience, honestly. Uh, it depends the group of people, what product it is, and what you're trying to, what's the goal of the email. So it varies. Not all email fits the same crowd. Yeah. One more question. Uh, you mentioned the pop-ups, and uh, you have the email automation, but uh, do you have any recommendations on capturing emails initially? Any search tool, hello bar, or landing page? Yeah. You can do any of them. Landing page, hello bar, uh, opt-in monster. All of them are great uh, uh, platforms to capture email. It, it's really up to you, your budget, and how complicated you want it to be. Yeah. Okay. 